Okay. So, uh, for those who just arrived, if you could post your experience with R in the chat, that'd be useful to me. If you've used it a little bit, not at all, or if you feel like you're an expert. Hey, Nate, this meeting is being recorded. Wow. So, so if you don't want to be have your image recorded, you should turn off your video. Eh, okay. Um, actually, I think you're the, the first uh, person who might approximate an R expert who stumbled into the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. Uh, well, this is what I want to have a discussion about. We're, we're constantly using R as kind of this statistical Swiss Army knife, like I mentioned. We use ggplot. We do various stuff with it. But the stuff that we do is not very easily repeatable. And it's also less obvious with R than with Python and other languages how to make a repeatable environment. So there's this thing called RENV, and there's a couple other similar tools none of which I could get to work. I spent several hours trying to get RM to work and through my eventually ended up flipping the table over and giving up, um, which is unfortunate because the whole goal should be, I have this R script, I'd like to leave it to people in perpetuity or leave it to my future self in six months so I can run it on a new machine and not have to worry about how to run it. So I'm not sure how to get to that point. For those of you who've only used uh, a little bit of R. I do want to show real quick, I'll just show R Studio and what it looks like. Um, my monitor is really, really high resolution and R Studio doesn't really know how to uh, scale very well. So I'm going to try making my window small and sharing a smaller window. Hi, John, if you don't want to be recorded, you should shut off your video. But you're welcome to leave it on if you want. All right, I'm going to share our studio. Um, if you could give me a uh, yes or no in the participants window, if you can sort of see this window. Okay, uh, excellent. So our studio is an IDE, an integrated development environment. Um, and the whole point of an IDE is you've got sort of your normal code editing window, right? But then you've also got uh, stack traces and global environment and ways to introspect on variables. And it's all very visual. Um, since R is very tightly linked to ggplot and other R markdown type features, it, you will also get uh, your plots to show up in a separate tab. And it kind of tries to keep everything arranged in this multi-tab, multi-pane view um, with all your tools and the toolbar for controlling your IDE, right? So the main workflow, workflow in R is you're going to have an R markdown file or something similar. And you're going to say, I want to run this section of code. And you're going to click the run the current chunk. There's keyboard shortcuts for that too. And then stuff is going to happen and the you'll be able to see what your variables are equal to over in this uh, global environment. Um, you can also drill down into certain subsets of packages. Uh, and then you can, if you want to see something, you can double click it and then you will get a view into say a data table. So it's much easier than uh, like in Python, when you're using uh, the Jupyter Notebook, it's kind of like that where you can just dump a table and it will print out a sort of easily viewable uh, set of information. So this is how you could debug something and be like, oh, what is actually in my table? And then you can go back and forth between the data and the code. Uh, this works pretty stack similarly. Tracing. Say again? What is, what is stack tracing? So stack tracing is when you are running a chunk of code and you're like, I want to put a, uh, I can't remember how to do this in our studio. Cause again, I am not an expert. There's a way to put a breakpoint in and, or when you get an error, uh, it will by default put you into this error inspector thing. Uh, and then it will show you the stack. And the stack is uh, the, the list of functions that have run to get you to the state that you're in. 
So if you just have a simple script that is just a sequence of things, it's not very handy. But if you're calling into some function or if you're using some library that's not working how you expect, you can drill into what, where the error is, what called that, what called that, and so on. And in that, uh, in that call trace, in that stack trace, uh, you can see the state of everything. So if you go to a certain function, you can see the state of its variables. Uh, does that answer the question, I hope? That answered it very well, thank you. Um, in my experience with Python and R, a lot of the time your workflow looks less like delving deep into a call trace and more like just running something over and over until you get a chart that looks the way you want. Uh, but R does have that uh, functionality in there too. Um, yeah, you would probably use that more if you were developing your own R package than if you were processing data. Yes. For processing data, probably less useful. For processing data, you're just going to be setting up some trunks and running them. Uh, the reason our markdown is handy is uh, if you attended Jeanette's courses, you probably saw her use the exported R markdown as a HTML thing that she could send out with uh, her emails to say, here's what I made. Uh, and you can view both the code and the results kind of in a nice format. Uh, all you need to do to do our markdown is put markdown uh, in a file and then put your R code inside uh, little backticks. Um, and I believe if you leave off the R, it'll be smart enough to know. No, it does require it. Um, anyway, R code, if you're not familiar uh, to store things in variables, unlike most modern languages, you don't say variable equals. You use this little arrow to say, shove this in a variable. But other than that, um, R is kind of a unique functional oriented language where you're kind of often, depending on the library, you're using weird functions to pass things to other functions, um, which can be a strange way to think of at first, but really it's a way to say, I'm piping my data. I'm taking my data, I'm gonna pipe it to some function that does something to the data, and then I'm gonna pipe it to another function that subtracts something from the data. Uh, and you can kind of compose small functions together with R. Uh, and I don't know, it's just an interesting way of thinking about uh, things. I like functional programming, but I don't love the way R does it. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to speak to that, Anybody have any opinions about using R? I, I found like that it's go ahead. I found that it's really great for doing the things that the libraries know how to do, but as soon as you want to do something different, it gets more confusing. Whereas Python, you're it's so much easier to go off on your own thing. Right, so this is some R code that I didn't write. This is just from a LabJS thing for importing uh, their SQLite data into a CSV. And I don't know why, for example, this little else branch with the period is basically the identity operator in R. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why they coded that's, it like that. That looks that's super weird. really crazy. That looks really weird to me, right? I don't, I don't know why it's like that, but probably there for a reason. Um, yeah, uh, I don't love the way composition works, but mostly it gets stuff done. Uh, and a lot of times you see people using dplayer and other similar libraries. Uh, Janitor is another uh, fairly useful data cleaning library. Um, but yeah, other, other than that, the IDE pretty much works the way other programming languages function. The problem is when at the top of the script you see it says require pacman and then p load this is just one of many ways in r to require packages and install and load them you've if you've used r all you've probably seen the install colon colon packages command that's the most common way the weird thing about the r uh sort of ecosystem is that all those packages are most of them actually are C, like native C code underneath that has to be compiled by your R Studio to work. 
So anytime you're installing packages, you're going out to the internet, you're grabbing some source code, and then R is trying to compile that, hopefully against libraries that you already have installed, and sometimes the like the weird little pyramid of uh, dependencies doesn't work right. And that's the problem I've been experiencing with RENV, where I can't get it, I can't stack things up in the right order to get it so that I, what I really want is just a script that says require RENV, and then I do a something at the command line to prepare, and then my thing just works. <laughs> uh that's what i'd like to figure out if anybody has any clues i would love to hear them um but that's pretty much all i wanted to talk about does anybody have any r related questions or uh any r experts want to speak up uh speak to this issue of repeatability the way i've seen this done in the past which is not helpful for everybody here um is to use something like my binder sure this only applies to you if you can use um if you can publish your data basically if your data can be public or the data that you're working on can be public um but in that it solves the replicability issue by just making an entire virtual pc for you and installing the packages you want Right. So an alternate to that on the brain imaging uh, environment would be to make a singularity container. But that's so heavyweight. It feels like there's got to be a uh, less heavy create. I mean, there are ways to script creating of singularity containers, but it's not simple. It feels like it feels like there's got to be a simpler way. Uh, and so I'll keep investigating that and maybe in a later quality coding meeting, I'll have a more useful set of slides where I'm like, here's how to configure this on the brain imaging servers. And it's really easy. But for right now, it's just something to be aware of that anytime you're doing scripting in R that relies on packages, uh, it's going to be often harder than you expect to get those packages configured the next time you run it. I will say you can make your you can make your own life a little bit easier um, by leaving good documentation. Definitely. If you, um, yes, if you're, as you're configuring your setup, if you keep track of what you did and leave that in a readme file, future you will be very thankful. It also looks like a fairly standard convention is to use an install.r file that just has a bunch of yeah. install.packages lines in it. So you look, oh, here are all the packages that this project is using. I think you can specify versions in that, but I don't know for sure. You can, uh, it's a little clumsy. Uh, and that that probably would work relatively well. Uh, one of the issues that I've hit is the default version of R on the brain imaging servers will change when it gets upgraded. And when that happens, if it's a minor version or greater, all your packages will break. Like it, it just won't work. So you have to recompile all your packages. Therefore having that install.r or something you can easily run again is definitely good. Um, I just had no end of troubles getting compiled. Like I had to, I was going down in, into C flags nonsense, trying to figure out how to. Everyone's stuck. My internet's broken. Oh, you were frozen, Dan. It was Dan. I thought it was me. I think it was Dan. Dan is still frozen. It's Dan. It, like, it, if you guys want to, please do. You're otherwise, back. otherwise, it was lovely to see you all. <laughs> hmm. You were working there for a second, Dan. Am I? Am I back? Yeah, you're back. You all right. Well, I've been trying to keep these meetings short, so this one actually was short. Uh, if nobody has anything else, have a good rest of your Wednesday. Hey, thanks, Dan. See you soon, hopefully with more repeatable R. Oh, and the next one is two weeks from today, and we'll be covering Git. And if you don't know what Git is, Ooh, you should come anyway. That's a good it, one. It is a handy thing to know. Super yeah. exciting. So before we leave, what... So there is no solution right now 
for um, having something on the server that runs the same version of R. Mm, well, or the packages the, of all the packages that you want. And you can you tried... install you can install a specific version of R using Miniconda. Um, yeah, that'd be the closest I could see. Um, and if you want to try to do that, let us know. I think. Remember how we were running into that issue with Tidyverse a while back? Yes. Is that also solvable using Miniconda, or was there something specific to Tidyverse that was? I don't. Issue? I don't know. I think the problem is that the the uh, Miniconda install of R is funky in a different way than the brain imaging one as far as compiling packages. So fun. Um, I don't know if that's yeah. the complete answer. My experience with using Miniconda is it's probably worth figuring out how this really works because that seems like it is the most promising road to go down for right now. But it's also not how you're probably gonna be running R Studio from your desktop. And so it's gonna be a little bit of a weird translation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, I think honestly, Andrew, I think the, the most reliable thing is what Nate said is just have a list of the install packages lines in a file. Yeah. And when it comes time to say, I mean, this is all great for like I'm messing around and I'm playing and I'm trying to see what's in my data and make some plots. Um but when it comes time to, I'm going to process all my data and do it for reals, that's when you want to formalize stuff a little bit more and do something that's really repeatable. Maybe switch to Python if you're not doing stat stuff um, or you know, talk to us and we'll help you figure something out that will get you a repeatable environment that works. Um, the reason that's, that's important in R in particular is there are a surprising number of like machine dependent things that can happen. Um, like some packages run differently on the Mac and on Windows and on Linux. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly when you're publishing, I have heard tales of people who have had stuff that they thought was working because it ran fine on their machines. But then when they ran it on all their data, stuff didn't come out the same way. Um, have you they want up running just literally a different method than they thought. Have either of you or others on here look played around with um, with writing your own packages and using that as a way to have to kind of force yourself to have thorough documentation? Um, Cause I, I try I've tried that route a bit with some of the FPRON stuff. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like if it's a good option for well, I don't know if it's a good option. One thing is <laughs> that's nice about it is that because it has the format of um, of documenting everything um, set up that it um, seemed like it would be useful for the problem that we tend to have in the lab of like somebody being here for two years, making a big Frankenstein and then leaving and not having a clear sense of what um, everything does. Right. For sure. And I think that goes for Python as well, like leave doc strings, like leave documentation in your code as much as possible. I don't know if it makes sense to make a package necessarily as long as you document it well enough. If you document But it's not making a package in R is pretty lightweight. That's true. Super light. Um, and so it's not a bad idea. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, and the next time the point, I haven't thought about this since summer because of Jeanette leaving. But um, at some point, I could talk about what I had been trying to do with um, the behavioral script. That would be awesome. Yeah, and sometime in the near future here, I would like to do just a little uh, thing on Binder. Yeah, do you so want to? Can... Do you want to do that one in the second next quality coding in mid December? Four weeks from now. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Cool. I want Especially because having having Git background will be very useful for people. It'll just blend right in. Yep. All right. I'm going to stop recording. All right.